you are new to this channel subscribe to this channel and like my video in today's tutorial we are going to be working on rubble stone wall this is not actually um, a part of measurement that is currently in practice but for the sake of um, the training as a quantity surveying student many lecturers have them it fit that all many syllabus as provided in different universities have them it fit that students are required to grow up in the knowledge of understanding how to take off quantities for stone walling and that is why i've made this tutorial available for this particular topic as you can see in this particular um design what we have here is the plan view of sorry um the the elevation of this plan and this is the plan this is just like a single wall we can call it a fence that has an opening as you can see the width of this opening is 1200 and that is what we have here so the plan of the, the plan view of this elevation is what is shown at this place these are the pyres the pyres we have here mind you pyres always act as pillars they help to transfer the load that is collected or as or yeah that is collected from the structure to the ground so these are pyres we also have attached pyres they are like short pillars that also help to support this wall so this is just a single straight wall that is what we are seeing in the elevations this way in order to measure for your stone wall rubble stone wall to be precise all you need to do let us start stone wall now these are the takeoff list for your measurement we need to measure the wall and in measuring wall we are going to consider the wall itself we we'll also consider leveling because we need to level so the, the top part of the wall to be able to assimilate uh, sorry to create a space for coping then we'll be measuring the coping itself after we are done measuring these three items on that wall we'll move down to the pyres under the pyres we are going to measure the major pyres so the main pyres we are still going to carry out leveling so you can see they are all the same leveling and then we would also measure the coping now after we are done measuring coping we will now move down to attach pyre we will measure attached pyres and under attached pyres we are going to make um, an adjustment for opening so when we get to that aspect of our measurement i will explain better now we'll now be considering a section which is called fair return. We are going to be carrying out fair return. Mind you, return in this case simply indicates this part of your pyres where uh, which is attached to the wall. So the part of your pyres attached to the wall are expected to be smoothened. They should be kept in such a way that they are smooth enough. So we have fair return at this point of our pyres. We also have fair return at this point of the attached pyres. So that they can create a smooth um what do you call it 90 degrees attachment to this wall itself so we i'll be showing us how to measure the fair return as well and last but not the least i'll be showing us um, um another thing that we call semi-circular centering i won't write it down <laughs> when we get there we are going to look at how we work on it so now the measurement of your rubble stone wall is so easy all you need to know is to know the length of your work and then the height remember that walls or block work yeah under masonry most of the items that are measured under masonry are usually measured in square meters so if i'm going to be measuring the wall of this rubble stone i'm going to measure it in square meter but before i proceed take note that i need to know the overall length that will be covered by the wall itself remember that this is my pyre so the wall will commence from this point and terminate at this point so in order to measure for my wall let us get the overall length of of the wall itself so i will begin as simple as possible just pick your dimension now irrespective of the kind of question you meet in your exams sometimes the lecturers may decide to be tricky and attach more pyres more attached pyres to the wall than what you can see here as you can see i was able to uh, make it up to three so that you would see how i can tackle these three se and three separate pyres that are attached to the wall so the lecturer can make it even more than this or he can make it less than this whichever the case may be just know that the same procedures are what you attach to your work so that you have the best result so let us start with the first one we'll be starting with our walls so under walls i need to get the overall length of my wall and that will be from this point to this point so i have to add up everything you can see i need to add up 2200 450 12 sorry okay sorry 3000 
one, two. So you add up all the length, excluding these two. Because these two are our normal separated pairs. But these are attached pairs. We have to include them in our measurement and I'll show you how we can make adjustment for them. So I will start with walls, 2,200. I'll move down to 450. I'll move down to 3,000. I'll move down to 1,200. Add up everything, 800. 450 1000 450 and lastly 700 that's all we need to add remember i didn't add this 400 because this 400 is telling me the thickness of the wall and it's not included in the length why this 200 is telling me the thickness of the projection for the attached pair so let us add this up together we have 0 0 5 0 that is 10 15 we write down 5 pick 1 8 is 12 16 24 we have 26 and then 26 plus 4 that would give us 30 32 so i have 2 pick up 3 5 8 9 10 so i have 10 this is now what i have as the overall length of my wall, 10,215. In case you do this on your own and you find out that there is a problem with my total calculation, please kindly correct it in your own work whenever you are working on this. But for the sake of this video, because of time factor, I'm just trying my possible best to ensure that I'm able to meet up with all this. So you can do this arithmetic on your own to verify whether the value is actually correct. So this is what we have, 10,000. 250 for the overall length so i've gotten the overall length of my wall all i need to do is to describe remember you're going to describe for your wall then we'll now move down to leveling so to describe for the wall let's assume the specification of this wall is hollington sandstone so i'm going to have it as hollington sandstone as wall now look at the wall. The wall is 400 mm thick. So I'm going to have it as wall 400 mm thick. Bedded and jointed in cement mortar. One ratio four. Now I'm done measuring for the sandstone. Like I said, this is supposed to be measured in square meters. So you are expected to know the height of your sandstone and then the length. We've actually calculated for the length. If you look at this carefully, you will see that the height from, excuse me, from this point to this point is 3,300. However, this 300 mm that is included in this dimension is my coping. This is supposed to serve as coping. So since this is serving as coping, I need to deduct this 300 from the overall length of 3300 to get the real height of my of the of the work remember this is going to terminate here so i will now end up looking for the height so the height is going to be 3300 i'll be less in coping which is 300 so our height is 3000 which is three meters i will now book length 10.25 by the width 3.00 this is now the booking for our wall itself. So I'm done with the wall. Just book. Remember, I calculated for the length and I calculated for the height of the wall. Then I will now move down to leveling. And the leveling, you don't need much. You just need to describe. So I will now say leveling. D to dice as I have described earlier. But the size of our leveling in this case is going to be 400 mm. Remember, we are leveling 400 mm wide. We are going to level... At this top base here, we are going to level this part so that the coping can have a smooth resting upon the stone itself. And that is why we are measuring for this. And this leveling is measured in linear meter. That is the overall length. So I'm measuring this leveling in linear meter. The same thing with your coping. Coping is measured in linear meter. So I have leveling ditto 400 mm wide. Now, because leveling is measured in linear meter and coping is also measured in linear meter, you may be asking what is coping. You must have seen a block work that is constructed this way. Let's say like a fence. You can go out and check your fence. You see it. If this is your fence, you naturally have something of this nature attached to your fence. 
Now, this is what we refer to as coping. It's always as the finished level of your fence. While you have your block work this way, or your this can be sandstone, this can be your block wall. Now, if you have your block wall this way, this is what you have for your wall. Now, this final part of the fence that is always having some kind of a design, sometimes like concrete or work itself, this is what we refer to as a coping. So, you need to provide a level surface for the coping to rest upon it. And so the coping is measured in linear meter, just like your leveling. So all I need to do is to say coping 400 mm wide, average depth or average height 300 mm, jointed and bedded in cement mortar one ratio four now i can now stop this here remember my coping and my leveling are measured in linear meter and it's going to cover the overall length of the calculation i've done here and the overall length is given as 10.25 so i can now bracket this and this now i'm not done measuring for wall you can see how simple it is just know that you need to get your overall length and then just ascertain your height from the um, from the elevation and then you are good to go so we are done with the wall we will now move down to pyre the pyre is also the same as the wall now for the pyre we just need to describe there is no point calculating or looking for let me say the length anymore because we already see that the, the pyre is 600 mm long this is the length of the pyre this is the width although the width is bigger or is larger than the length but we still consider the fact that will take the length along the entire length of the structure so we are going to be considering 600 mm as the length why this is going to still serve as our width so take note of that so for the pyre all you need to do is to describe so i can now say natural um stone randomly rubbled in hollington as end pyres so i cannot talk about the width 800 mm wide bedded and jointed in cement mortar one ratio four so you can see i just described now the next thing to do is the length Remember that your pyre is going to be measured in linear, um, sorry, I said linear meter, in square meter because this is going to still be masonry work. So we'll be assuming that this is not concrete work where we have to measure it in um, cubic meter. This is masonry. This is part of stone work. And all stone work are usually measured either in meter square or as linear meter. But for the sake of this pyre, we've mentioned the, 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 the width already. So we'll be measuring this in linear meter. That is going to be the length, which is 0 0.6, 600. So the length is 0 0.60 by the height. As you can see, the pyre is going to commence from here and stop here as 3.3. Why the coping is 300 above the coping of the normal wall. So I have it as 0 0.60 by 3.30. This 3.30 is the height of the pyre itself. Don't forget it is measured in square meter. So I'll multiply this by 2 because I have 2 end pyre. Always remember that 2 end pyre. Now, like I said, just like in the wall, when you are done measuring for the wall, you measure for the leveling and coping. The same thing after the pyre, you measure for leveling and coping. So I can just move down to uh, leveling. I can say D2, leveling, 800 mm. Remember, this time around is 800 mm wide. Now, adding on, I can still D2, coping. 800 mm wide so i'm bracketing it remember your coping and your leveling are measured in um what do you call it they are measured in linear meter so all i need is just the length and the length is 0 0.60 so i'm going to multiply this by two for the two empire with this i'm done measuring for the pyres all i need to do now is to move down to my attached pyre you can see how easy this is very simple Attach pyre. 
Now, just like the way you measured for your um for for the end pyre, you're going to measure for your attached pyre in the same way. Remember that they are always measured in square meters. So if I want to measure for my attached pyre, kindly look at this. Take note. I need you to take note. Your attached pyre does not stop here. This is a pyre. So the pyre is which acts as a pillar is supposed to be culminate. It's supposed it's supposed to be culminated into the wall. That means it's supposed to be entered from this point down to where you have here so this pyre is fixed inside the wall it doesn't start from here it starts from here and end here so that it can give the maximum functionality to this wall the same thing applies to this pyre they all commence from this point and stop at this point so if you are measuring for your pyre always remember that you need to know the overall width remember that i said we are assuming this place to be our length for the pyre since we took this at 600 so this pyre would also be taken its length as 450 450 450 but we need to know the width of our pyre since the distance from here to here is 200 and the distance from here to here is 400 the overall width of our pyre is now going to be 200 plus 400 which will give us 600 these are now the real attached pyres so i hope you understand that so for the attached pyres to get the width i will say 400 which is the width of our wall plus 200 which is the width of its projection that is 006 this is 600 mm this is now the width from this point to this point of our attached pyre so take note of that we have it at 600 mm so all we need to do for attached pyre is to book so i can now say hollington sand stone as before described Pyre and the pyre is 600 mm as we've calculated 600 mm thick. So, since I've gotten this, remember your pyre is booked in square meter. Take a look at this. We have the distance from here to here, the length as 450, which is 0 0.45. So, I'll bring it down 0 0.45. And the height, remember, square meter is going to be length and height. The height from this point to this point is 2.3. So, I will book it as 2.30 now i've booked my pyre i'm going to multiply this by three because i have three different attached pyres you can see we have one two three three different attached pyres so i'll multiply this dimension by three remember this is the length 0 0.45 by the height 2.3 it should always be the length and the height whenever you're measuring for sandstone it's going to be the length and the height do not forget that now i haven't booked for this you should remember that while we were considering our wall, when we measured the wall from this point to this point, we included this space. We included this space and this space in our sandstone. So it is expected of us that we need to deduct this space that we actually included in our measurement. We have to deduct it at this moment. So what I will do in a nutshell is to deduct this wall from this pyre. So permit me to transfer this um, dimension to a new page so that I will show us what to do. So let me recopy this again. I have it as Hollington Sandstone as before described. Pyre 600 mm thick. Then our dimension that we booked was 0 0.45 which I have described by 2.30 by 3 for three space now please take note that this description covers the three pyres here but when we were measuring for doors we actually took note of we actually included this space here so when we're measuring for not doors precisely when we're measuring for um the first wall we included this 450 in our overall overall calculation so it is now our responsibility to deduct it you don't need to do any arithmetic in this case the only thing you need to do is just to come down here and write deduct walls as before describe just deduct walls or you can say deduct Hollington sandstone wall let me write it deduct Hollington sand stone walls as before described then you bracket it all you need to do is this so that the space that covered for this sandstone wall initially 
can now be deducted as we've stated in this case. Now, if you do this, you are now done measuring for this item. You are done measuring for your attached pie and I've already shown you the adjustment I was talking about early on. Now, the next thing to do when you are done measuring for attached pie is to deduct your opening. You are better to deduct opening. Remember, we have a door here. And this door is supposed to be deducted from our stone opening. It's not supposed to be included at all. So I need to deduct this door. Assume that there is no door here. Now the width from here to, sorry, I mean there is no door here, I would have left my calculations this way. But because there is a door, the distance from here to here is 1,200. So I need to deduct this door. And the height from here to here is 2.3. But we still have a semicycle at the top. I will show us how to deal with this aspect. Now let us go back and say, deduct opening. So the dot opening, I can now say Hollington Sandstone. Sorry, no need of opening in this case. Just deduct Hollington Sandstone as before described of wall 400 mm thick. So we have deduct Hollington sandstone as before described of wall 400 mm thick. And how do I deduct it? Now look at this diagram. You can see the distance from here to here is 1.3. Now this is just what we have. We have a door this way. And it has a semicircular arc. Now the distance, I can just divide this into, this is a semicycle, this is a rectangle. The distance from here to here is 2.3. And distance from here to here is 1.2. So I can just deduct this one first before I move into the semicycle. So take note that for this place, as I'm deducting this, I'll first of all book, like I said, the right angle, which is 2.3 by 1.2. So I'll book 2.30 by 1.20. This is for the wall at the rectangular part. That's for the rectangular part. I'll move down to this semicircular part. This is area. Now the area of a semicycle is given as two sorry is given as pi r square or you have it as pi d over 2 Now if the area of your side of your cycle is pi r square remember your r is equal to sorry is equal to d over 2 so if i replace um r by d sorry i'm supposed to have it as um, pi d square over 4 this is the area. Now this is the area of a cycle pi r square, which is given as pi d square over 4. Because our r is equal to d over 2. So if I replace it, I have d square over 4. Now if the area of my cycle of my cycle is pi d square over 4, area of a semicycle is going to be pi d square over 4 multiplied by 1 over 2. And that is going to give me pi d square over 8. Do not forget this formula. Now we are going to use this formula in our calculation. We are going to use it in our deduction. And I will show us how to do that now. Since the area of a cycle is pi d square over 4, then the area of a semicycle will be pi d square over 4 multiplied by half. So since I, I mentioned that we are deducting first and foremost for this rectangular aspect of the door which I have shown here, now we need to deduct for this semicircular aspect of the door. And remember, whenever you have anything circular or semicircular, the only thing you need to be replacing or putting down in your dimension is your D, the diameter. Now, uh, diameter is given as a square. So if I want to book this and show that it is in area, I'll be booking diameter double times to show that it is square. Diameter multiplied by diameter. Look at this plan carefully. You will discover that the distance from here to here is 1,200, which becomes the diameter of the semicycle. From this illustration, you can see that when I divide it this way, this 1.2 would also alternate to this place. So here would also be 1.2, showing us that the diameter is 1.2. And since the area of a semicycle is pi d square over 4 times half, so I'll build down my d. My d is going to be 1.20 by 1.20 because it is square remember d square is d times d which makes it 1.20 by 1.20 now i'm going to still multiply 1.20 by pi over 4 which i have not worked with yet so i have pi over 4 then multiply by 
half. This is now showing us the area of that semicircular part of the opening. Remember, first and foremost, you have to deduct the opening just the way you usually deduct door and window opening in superstructure. But in this case, the opening is a combination of rectangle and semicircle. So deduct the rectangle first and deduct the semicircle next. And this is the area we are using, the formula we are using for the area of our semicircle. So D square comes first. This is D square. Then the remaining pi over 4 shows up next. And last but not the least, the half. If you have done this, then you are done with carrying out your adjustment for opening. The only thing that is left for you to tackle is to tackle your fair return, which I stated in our takeoff list here. This is it, fair return. So to work on fair return, all I need to do is to describe. I just have to describe fair return on random rubble wall sorry rubble 200 mm wide like i mentioned you would always in fact whenever this kind of structure is being constructed since this is a stone wall the edges where this uh, this uh, this at, 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 attached pyre meets with this wall it is expected to be taken care of clearly and that is what we call the fair return this point where this attached pyre meets with this wall is called the return so we need to ensure that this part of this pyre is being repaired properly adequately to give it a smooth finish the same thing applies to this part and this part with this part and that is why we have it as 200 mm wide so the first fair return we are working on is for this 200 mm projection of the external of the attached pyre we are also going to do the same thing for this projection of our main end pyre so let us start with the attached pyre we have it as 200 mm wide for the attached pyre and your fair return is always measured in linear meter and the only thing you need to consider is the height now the height of this attached pyre is 2.3 since the height is 2.3 in this fair return i'll just book it as 2.30 then I'll multiply it by 2. These 2 stands for these 2 parts. The fair return done to this place and the fair return done to this other place. Then we have 3 different attached pyres. So I'll multiply this by 3. So 2.3, height of the attached pyre. These 2 stand for the 2 sides of the attached pyre. Why these 3 stand for 3 different attached pyre altogether. Now we'll still do the same thing. Fair return. D2. This time around, I'm working with 800 mm wide. When you see 800 by mm wide, it, it indicates that I'm now calculating the fair return for this end pyre at this point and at this point. And then when when I'm dealing with the the, the 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 end return for this pyre, just know that we have one end. We are going to be having one um, work done at this place, another one done at this place. So for this end pyre, we have two space. But the height of our end pyre is given as 3.3 meters, excluding the coping. So I'm going to have the height of my end pyre 3.30 multiply by 2 because i have this and this then multiply by 2 because i have two end pyres i hope this is clear enough so two end pyres two end return just take note of that now we are expected to also measure for this and fair return this fair return to this opening at the point where this door is opened that is at this point and at this point we are supposed to provide a fresh finish to these edges that include the height from this place to this place the height from this place to this place and also the this particular semicircular um edge we are supposed to provide a fair return to that place so i'm still going to say fair return d2 this time around we have it as 400 mm wide because the width of our block work is 400 mm and when i provide fair return for this space I'm going to book it as 2.3. Remember, the height, the first height is 2.3. So I have it as 2.3, 0, multiplied by 2. This is the fair return for the opening. But take note, I haven't done anything relating to this particular um, semicircular curve. Now, instead of providing a fair return for this semicircular part, I need you to know that aside from the, um, from the furnishing of this this edge here to make it smooth there, there there's an extra work that is going to be done to this particular um design here at the door 
that would require additional expenses. And because of there will be a need for an extra work at this semicircular part, we need to calculate for an extra over. This is going to be an extra over item because aside from the, the stone that is used to complete this um, the, 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 the wall around this part, an additional extra stone will be brought to this place to provide a better design and probably create an arc at this place. And that is why we call it an extra over. So rather than measuring for fair return at the, at the, at the bottom, I will measure everything as an extra over item, which include the fair return underneath and also the provision of additional stones to create this design of an arc. And so instead of saying fair return, what I'll end up doing is to measure for extra over. Before I am done, before I describe for this extra over item, I need to first and foremost know the work that is going to be carried out. Now, the extra over item is not just going to cover this place to this place. That is this semicircular part. It's going to cover this entire space here. So, and the distance from here to here is 150. But the distance from here to here is 150. That is to tell you that the, diam the diameter that will now be covered in this work is no longer 1200 it will exceed it will extend to this place and this place so to know the original diameter i'll be using i'll have 1200 then i will now add 2 by 150 which is our projection to make it 300 so our read diameter is now 1500 now I repeat myself the, the distance from here to here is 1.2. I need to add this 150 and this 150 to give us the real diameter that will be covering this extra over item. Since I need to add this and this, so I, 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 I multiply this 150 by 2, and that was what gave us this 300. So the real diameter for the extra over item is now 15. That is commencing from this point to this point. So what we need to do is to describe and book. And remember that we are booking in linear meter for our extra over item since you are move, booking in linear meter you need the knowledge of your um your, your your geometry and you need to know just the circumference of a semicycle to be able to book for this remember that the circumference of a cycle is given as 2 pi r in a nutshell a circumference of a cycle with diameter is going to be given as pi d so if the, the, the circumference of a semi of a cycle is 2 pi r or pi d, then the circumference of a semicycle is going to be either pi r or pi d over 2. So we'll be using any of this formula to book for our final um, computation. So I'm going to say extra over sandstone, sorry. Extra over sandstone as before described for semi circular arc 150 mm wide in faces that is at this point it is going to be 400 mm wide now, since I have this, remember that we say that the perimeter of our cycle is given as pi d over 2. So if I want to book for this, our d is no longer 1200. Our d has now become 15 as we calculated. So I'm going to book it as 1.50 multiplied by pi over 2. Remember, d is 1, so I just have 1.50. Multiply by what is left is pi over 2. Now, if I have booked for this, the last thing to do is our semicircular centering. This is just like a form work that is provided at the surface of this semicircular part of this structure that will help us to hold every stone that will be used in creating this arc in place. So it's just like measuring your form work for lintel. That is what we are going to be measuring now. So I will now have semicircular centering for... 1.20 meters span and it is 400 and 400 mm wide in surface so this is going to be the woodwork the form work created at the surface it is 1200 mm um wide why is going to be sorry 1200 mm long why is going to be um, um 400 mm wide 
and it's going to be placed at the soffit as the bottom of this semicircular arc and when you do this you book one because we have only one opening in case in your exams you see two doors make sure that anything you are doing relating to this door you multiply it by two thank you for spending time in watching this video if you find anything that is confusing from everything i've said in this video kindly leave it at the comment box below and also subscribe to this channel if you are new to this platform like our videos and share it with friends thank you for your time and meet you in the next video how many minutes